Here is my implementation of the Launch Control Excel and the Boombox uh, for the Juno, uh, Alpha Juno 2 or 1. So if I change here, I can uh, I have put a program change button here, so I can. And here I have an initial patch. I can start with. But first of all, all I'll uh, explain what's going on here. Uh, the Novation launch control doesn't look like this from the factory. Instead it looks like this. Uh, it's a very uh, useful device that can send uh, uh, control change messages from the rotary and the sliders and from the buttons it can send either these buttons. It can send either control change or uh, note messages. Uh, I've uh, set up two uh, pages here uh, where I changed everything to control change. And I've also made this uh, uh, template. I bought, uh, you can buy these pre-cut out of plastic, and then I printed on them myself. This is still a prototype, but this is the way it looks right now. And you put it over, and it tells you what all the different buttons do. Uh, in this layout, you see everything that is, uh, all text that is uh, white or green or yellow, is used uh, on uh, on the first page. If I hold down user here and choose the second uh, memory, then I have uh, whatever is in red print here. So I, on page two, I managed to squeeze in so it's only the VCA envelope mode uh, and the VCF envelope mode and the high pass filter, uh, and all the other uh, features work on page two as well. But if I Go back to uh, number one here. You have uh, uh, you have of course all the different controls. You can have delay for the uh, LFO. Uh, and all the DCO has all the different controls. How much of the envelope uh, is supposed to influence? Envelope on the pitch, other than maybe uh, for a brass sound. Uh, after touch, of course, uh, you can add uh, the after touch effect. Uh, I've also mapped the after touch to this uh, knob here that says expression. So I can. And I also have a knob that uh, sets the modulation. And I have MIDI volume as well as portmanteau time, but I'll, I'll get to that. Uh, bender range, of course, uh, you can choose anywhere from. Anywhere from uh, zero to uh, an octave. And then pulse width modulation depends on which waveform you've chosen. Right now, uh, in the init fat patch, I only have the sawtooth wave right now. Uh, here is PWM uh, waveform, or PWM waveform for the sawtooth. And as you can see, I could change the waveforms here for the sawtooth. If you want the, the square wave, you turn on here. Here you have the square wave with a uh, pulse width waveform. Or the static ones. I notice I, I, I speak while I play, and that's not too good. I'll, I'll try and uh, not do that. Uh, and then, of course, you have the uh, sub oscillator. 
right now I don't have anything on uh, if I turn this sub on here and you have the sub waveform here the filter uh, I'll change hands uh, uh, here I have the octave switches the envelope is supposed to influence. No, I don't have a very interesting envelope. But say I set it to... And so on. follow uh, if it's going to open up uh, further up the keyboard range opens up towards the right after touch of course as on most most of these since uh, the after touch is pretty hard to press but it works um, I've talked about the sawtooth. Here I have the program changed, as I talked about. Um, I put a warning sign here because you don't want to change your sound in the middle of editing. Um, then, as I said, I have the modulation here. I have uh, three performance controls here. And this is the uh, aftertouch. Uh, I call it ex expression because uh, initially I planned to have it uh, respond to the same things that you have for the, the foot pedal, that's called expression. Um, but uh, it didn't do anything, so I changed it to aftertouch instead, which is pretty good, uh, again, since these keyboards are usually uh, have pretty bad aftertouch. Um, and I've noticed that it becomes such, uh, such a, uh, a performance tool, this as well, because uh, you have access to all the knobs. And then you have the... Um, then I have a portamento time. I have a portamento on and off down here. So you can go. level of course and uh, after touch level here I notice if you turn up the after touch level and turn the expression on there you can get super loud signal oh, it's distorting a little bit um, the subway uh, the chorus rate I was showing you And I already showed you the octaves. And here you have a noise level. Turn down the other waves here.
Okay, a quick uh, playthrough here, and then of course you have the uh, envelope modes, and uh, and you also have the high pass filter here on the second page. That I you notice up here on the right it says uh, there's a red light there and a green light there. Then I know I'm on the first page. If I press the second page, then it's red there instead. So now I know I'm on the second page. Uh, so how did I set this up? First of all, I used the uh, MIDI translator software from Bohm, and I wrote a script uh, that translates all the CC messages to system exclusive that uh, uh, Juno needs. Uh, it responds to very few CC messages, that's just for the standard ones, for like aftertouch and stuff like that. Uh, so everything had to be translated. Some of the knobs don't go from 0 to 127, instead they go maybe from uh, 0 to 5, or they go from 0 to 12. So I had to write scripts to divide the range of these, otherwise all the values would be on the very first increment uh, and such. Also did for the program change, instead of 128 uh, program changes, I chose to only have 64, otherwise the increments are too small. But I can... But I can uh, change all the, the ones that are in memory, and those are the ones that you'll be editing and saving anyway. But I'll make a, a separate video about the MIDI translator and how I wrote the scripts. But uh, all I can say right now is, uh, right now this is a, in a prototype stage. I'm pretty close to completion here. Uh, so I can make these things uh, available. Uh, I'm also going to order these uh, professionally printed. Right now, uh, it looks a bit, little bit wo wonky when I've printed it myself. Uh, but uh, that's how far I've gotten so far, and uh, it feels like the software is pretty much done. I had ideas about uh, interacting with the LEDs here. Now the LEDs are static lights; they don't change when I change the values and stuff. But the problem is that um, in order for the LEDs to work, even for the also for the buttons, uh, means that you have to have uh, you need to send um, system exclusive out from the synth uh, as well, uh, so they get updated. And uh, felt like too much of a headache right now. Anyway, now it works excellent. I can access every uh, parameter in the in the Juno, and as I said, this also works as an excellent performance tool because since you have access to all the different parameters and also these performance uh, tools over here. So that was the first installment of these videos. I'll get back to you uh, about the MIDI translator software. But cheerio for now. That was a wimpy sound. Oh well, ciao.